You know when you drive downtown in the city, you see those giant skyscrapers and buildings and towers? Well, 50 stories up on the top floor of the building, the lizard people are laughing at you because they are making money off of your dumb ass especially right now that you're consuming content on their platform. They have been selling you lies your entire life and you eat them up like a dog licks peanut butter off of my... Well, we don't have to get into specifics here. I'm not hungry anymore. You sure? Yeah. What's yeah. wrong? While you go about your day to day, living like a happy little Melvin, <laughs> the lizards are working away behind the scenes, programming your life to go in the direction that they want it to. You're too plugged in to realize it until it's too late. You're an old, miserable roach like Gary. Don't be like Gary. You may be thinking, oh, Denmo, you're just going to tell me not to play video games or go on social media. No. This ain't one of those videos for dumb people, okay? You know how sometimes as a YouTuber, you gotta make videos that do good for views, and then other times you do a video that's actually gonna change the way people think? This is one of those videos, bro. We're gonna go so much deeper than that bullshit you've been watching the rest of today because you have no self-control. I'm gonna share seven ways that society lied to you without you even realizing it, and how these will potentially ruin your life unless you become aware of these secrets in fact the seventh secret is so triggering you might not even want to get to that point you might just want to watch the first six and then scroll away like a good little melvin most people cannot handle it so if you're a melvin and you want to just keep walking through life uh, 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 click away from this video bro just go back to scrolling buddy go on TikTok or something all right this is for the men here not the boys let's talk about the first way society lies to you just be yourself you're good enough the way you are Ah, oh, man, you stupid f**ks. I almost feel bad for you. Life's absolutely cutthroat. It's all a competition. I used to be just like you, bro. When I was in school, I wanted the girl to like me. So I asked my mom, what do I do? She's like, oh, just be nice. And I was like, oh, okay. And that didn't f work, dude. <laughs> Ever work on a construction site before? Go be nice to people on a construction site. See what happens. You literally get fired for being a Good and nice people get absolutely run over. There have been plenty of times over the years in relationships, in life, where I thought, well, if I'm just a nice guy and I'm nice and I'm myself, people will like me. Bull shit. Everybody says that because they don't want any competition. Imagine if you actually became the highest version of yourself and you weren't just a nice guy that got absolutely run over by anything that wants something from you. That would not be in their best interest to share that secret with you. Because if you get tricked into thinking, just be yourself, that means it's easier for them to control you and just run you over get you to put your head down and not put up any kind of resistance whatsoever. It also allows them to smash the girls that you want to, to get the jobs that they want to, to do the things that they want to. Why? Because you're too busy being too nice and doing the wrong things all the time. And it's so much easier for them to do things successfully. Now, I'm not gonna talk about how to get girls in this video, but I know that a lot of you are trying to get a girlfriend, you're trying to build a new social circle. So if you do wanna learn how to do that in under two months and actually get results. Check out Socializer. It's my online private community where I help guys improve their social skills, get girls. And if you don't believe me, you can just watch the hundreds of testimonials, but you can sign up for that while watching this video and then do that another time because we actually have to go over the other six ways society has been lying to you. This is the second way they've been doing it. You should pursue your passion as if it is some kind of right or entitlement. The truth is that pursuing your passion is a privilege. You look at me and you think, oh, he's a YouTuber. Little did you know that I used to be a cockroach just like you. I was in high school and I told my parents, well, I don't want to get a job. Why would I need to? You guys are already paying for everything. What a stupid 15 year old perspective to have. I remember getting my first job on a brutal construction site. I was doing installations on chicken factories and it taught me how to be a man. And then I went from that job to another construction job. Then I worked in a chicken factory killing chickens all day. And then I would clean the insides of barns. Then I worked as a forest firefighter. And then I worked as a bartender. And the list goes on and on. I worked a bunch of bullshit jobs. And guess what? That wasn't my passion, bro. I didn't want to do any of that shit. But I didn't have the money to go to university. Unlike all these YouTubers that tell you how to like start a business, I didn't have rich family. I didn't get to go to private school, okay? So it was very tough for me to actually pursue my passion. At the same time, I was still born in Canada, a first world country where you have the opportunity to become anything that you want to. Oh my God, I'm so grateful and so blessed for this opportunity because if I was born in some 
third world shithole like Albania or something. Shout out to the Albanian fans that watch this channel. Who knows if I would have ever been able to make a living in front of a camera. You know what I mean? So you have to have a certain sense of gratitude for whatever success you do have, but don't feel like it's this God-given birthright. You were not put on this earth to do what you want. There are opportunities. You can work towards doing what you want, but in order to do what you want, you need to do what you need to do to get there. It's easy for people to tell you this though, chase your dreams, because most people that ask stupid questions like, what do I do? They deserve a stupid answer like, oh, chase your dreams. They don't have time to explain what actually works because your attention span probably can't even make it through however long it takes them to explain what you actually need to do. That's why you'll watch a video like this, but you won't buy a course because buying the course actually involves going for the thing you wanna do. It involves you learning, watching hours of content, doing homework, doing challenges, working with a coach directly. You don't wanna do any of that. You just want the results instantly. So to tell a long story short, guys, it's very important for you to chase your dreams in an intelligent way, in a strategic way. Don't quit your nine to five right away, but pursue it on the side. It's definitely worth it. But I think that it's so naive for people to believe that they actually deserve to be something, like an artist. I like the idea of acting and writing and making movies one day, but I've worked my ass off for years to get there. And a lot of people that I've met in the uh, industry, I guess you could call it, they live in like a bubble where they've never had a real job and they just think that they are the greatest gift to earth because they have the luxury of not having to work for money and pursue something like that because they come from money. It's like a total disconnect from society. And oftentimes those are the people telling you, hey man, chase your dreams. Well, of course you'd say that. You were able to afford that. <laughs> Most of us can't. So take that with a grain of salt. The next thing that society lies to you about is that you need to take pills. The reason that you're told to take pills is because it's cheaper and easier to just get you to shut the up than how to actually train you how to properly handle your issues. Pain is normal. Anxiety is normal. Depression is normal. They are Earth's incentive for you to change your circumstances, okay? I'm sick and tired of people that have a weight issue trying to go on pills or eating food or finding some kind of way to numb themselves and then say, oh, well, I'm depressed. Of course you are, dude. You're not doing the things you're supposed to. You are literally trying to find a shortcut or a cheap way out. And the easiest way to do that is substances and pills. And I know that's controversial to say. I know some people have some kind of really unfortunate life circumstance where they were born a certain way and they have to take pills to live. But it's like a physical issue as opposed to, well, my life sucks, so I want to numb myself. Most people numb themselves. They take that as good advice because you're probably surrounded by idiots too. I would rather feel like shit and have to work through my issues than feel nothing and not actually do anything. You need to actually improve yourself so that you don't need the pill. So I don't know what country you're from, but you might be thinking, oh, pharmaceutical companies, they're paying doctors to give out more prescriptions. No, they're actually not. However, what they do do is they incentivize doctors to have as many appointments as possible per hour. And they get a bonus depending on how many appointments they do per day. So for example, if the doctor actually has to have you come in and then they give you 10, 15, 30 minutes of time to listen to you, hear about the issues in your life, and then make some kind of diet plan, nutrition plan, game plan for how you can overcome this anxiety or depressive state you're in, that's way too much time. It's so much easier for them to just be like, okay, listen, one of my other clients took this and it worked good for them. So I'm gonna write you a prescription for blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, you're in and out of the office in two minutes, or if you even make it to the office, it's probably a conversation on the phone, let's be honest. Within two minutes, your doctor already says, yep, I know what'll solve your problems, and then gives you a prescription for pills. And the more of these they can do in an hour, the bigger a bonus they get. So imagine actually listening to people and giving them good advice versus just writing them a prescription. You could do that way faster. So this actually makes them do 10 to 15 times as many appointments per hour as they would if they actually had to sit down and talk to you. And you listen to them and believe everything they say because they're a doctor. Little do you know, they're incentivized to get you out of there as fast as possible and then get a bonus. I know it sucks, not every doctor is the same, but that's how it works in Canada anyways. The next lie that's being told to you is that you need a house. Oh my God, this is especially huge in Canada right now. You might not realize this, but mortgages are actually just massive loans from banks. Super impressive, bro. You qualify to pay a bank 
one million dollars over the next 30 years you goofball talk about being had being scammed you think that buying a house or having a house is like the end all be all no what you're doing is you're taking a several hundred thousand dollar loan paying a fat ton of interest on it limiting yourself to travel and also limiting your life because now you're cut working whatever job it is you have just to meet those monthly mortgage bills. Think about all the things that you actually want to do in life, the risks you would need to take to do them. If you have a mortgage, those go out the window, bro. Well, I gotta pay rent every month. Gotta pay my mortgage. Good luck escaping the job that you despise so much when you have to pay off a million dollar loan for the next 25, 30 years. This leads perfectly into a situation where you find yourself in a relationship you don't enjoy with a person you don't care much for and probably isn't the best you can do, but it's comfortable. And maybe them and their parents pitch in a little bit on the mortgage. They help you with the down payment. Now you're stuck living with a person that you don't even really give a f about and you know you're just settling and compromising, but it's like, well, they told me I need a house. They told me I need to get a nine to five. And then they told me I need to get married. That's the next one. That's bullshit, bro. Okay. You need to get married and most marriages work out. Well, I'm sure you're not new to the internet here. Obviously, you already know that at least 50% of marriages do not work out. Divorce rate is especially high in the West, here in Canada and North America. But the biggest problem of all isn't necessarily that you waste a bunch of time, you get into a relationship, it doesn't work out, all the pain and trauma that comes with that. But legally, you get absolutely f***ed. The government does not consider men to have the same rights as women. We are seen as below women. And there's plenty of laws that explicitly show this, but that's for another video. But just go and Google family divorce law in Ontario. Look what happens to men when they get divorced. Look how much money they have to waste on lawyers. Look how much of the time they get custody of the children. Look at how much money they have to give to their significant other. It's just a slaughterhouse. And most people, when they're unhappy, they consecutively do things that the society has told you to do to be happy, right? Get a brand new car. That way you can go fast and it looks cool. Get a house. That way you have a house because the markets are going to get higher and it's going to get worse. Now you need to get in a relationship and then you need to get married and then you need to go on vacation two weeks a year. Next thing you know, you're doing all these things and you're like, wait a second, I'm still not happy. Why did I do all this? Because society wants you to do all this to keep you from permanently solving your problem and keep working the job so you can pay taxes and they get the work done that they need you to do. Good boy. Back to work now. Okay. The next lie that society tells you is that complaining and crying is a good thing. You need to open up. You need to share your emotions. Dude, that is one of the biggest bullshit things I've ever heard in my life. There's this weird trend right now where we insist on forcing men to be as emotional as women, when in fact, men are not as emotional as women. Men are different and that's okay. They might say that, but the truth is they get turned off and repulsed when you cry. They'll empathize with you, but they need you to be the leader. And if you cry, it just doesn't look good. Now I've cried before. I'm not immune to crying. And also I'm not talking about crying from happiness. I was watching the UFC this past weekend. Sean Strickland defeated Israel Adesanya and you could see when he was celebrating at the end and doing his interview, he almost teared up a couple times because he was so overwhelmed with the emotions of winning that he almost cried. And that's okay. That's not the same thing. What I'm talking about is people that whine and cry and complain and gossip about others. I'm talking those people that can never get their shit together and they're always telling you how it's always this person's fault or whatever. And it's just like, who is telling you that you should be doing this instead of actually solving your problem. Keep it to yourself, bro. Use that pain and emotion and sadness as motivation. Don't just let it out for the validation of others telling you, yes, your problems are real. Why would you acknowledge that your problems are real just to get validation from others? That's not productive at all. That's a form of coping. So I'm sure at some point you'll go through it. I've definitely gone through some very painful times, but it's like complaining and crying you got to get it out of your system in private or with somebody you love, but don't ever be that guy. Okay. Ooh, here's a big one, dude. And this one's going to really trigger you. Society will never tell you this, but life is not fair. It's just not. 
As much as society tells you that they give a fuck and they pretend and they're trying to make things fair, they don't. If you don't believe me, go and look at all of the homeless people, all of the people that are working jobs they hate because they were lied to by people that sold them loans so they go to university and sink tens of thousands of dollars into a program where they're not employable. Go and show me all these men that are in jail because they were convicted of something they didn't do. However, because of the way society is set up, men have less rights than women legally when it comes to certain crimes or alleged crimes rather, and their entire life is ruined because why? Because they're men, because society. What about the kid that died yesterday of cancer randomly when he was 10 years old? It's like there's a million things that are bullshit. I believe in karma. I think that that's just something I tell myself though, because I like to put good energy into this world. I'll pay for people's parking once in a while if I see that their card isn't working on the machine. But in reality, I don't think anybody's ever come up and paid for my parking. It's always the other way around. So as much as you put good energy into this world, if you expect to get that good energy back in a sense that like, if you don't get that energy back, it hurts you, you need to change your expectations. I put good energy into this world and I anticipate getting it back because I believe in karma. But if I don't get it back, I don't take it personally, you know, because I knew from day one, life is not fair. Never was fair, never will be. We all get f***ed eventually. Now, if you feel alone, if you feel like society is f***ing you in the ass and you want other people to talk about it with, if you want a community of other like-minded men that are improving themselves and getting social, you can join my socializer community in the description below. You can meet other brothers and I'll end the video by saying this. Life is not fair. We're all getting f***ed by somebody. But what if you had a choice for who you got f***ed by? What if you actually had a little bit more control about all of the things that happened to you. I actually put a video together where I talk about that and how life screws us all, but you do have more choice than you realize as to who you get screwed by and how much they screw you. And I put that video on the screen right here. Go and watch that video right now.